honestly say that we're poor, we're tired, we've been investing every bit of energy into this process, and I'm sure you, you of all people can relate to that. Um, and so what we're wondering is, just from the conversation we just had in that room, um, if, if we push things beyond December in the terms of the, you know, a kind of a concrete agreement, how can we keep the pressure of civil society up in the sense that, because there's so much momentum building towards December, and we don't want that to just fizzle. So what do you think? What are your suggestions for keeping that beyond, beyond December? Well, I, th I think my first point would be that I'm not asking you to give up on a concrete outcome. Um, I mean, what I'm saying is that at the end of Copenhagen, you can have a list of rich country targets. You can have a list of what major developing countries will do to limit their emissions. You can have a list of what countries will contribute to put significant finance on the table. And that's what we've been working towards. Um, what, what I think will be different in Copenhagen is the form of those lists. But I think if you were to, to ask any of your peers that have not been following this process to explain the difference between a legally binding treaty, um, a political agreement, or a set of decisions, they might have a hard time answering the question. What, for me, is, is most important is accountability, that you have clarity um, on targets, that you have clarity on finance, clarity in such a way that you can hold countries accountable. Um, and I think you can get that clarity. I just think that, that writing that